Thank you guys so much for joining. We have Lori Wright, who is joining us today. And today we're going to cover the topic of planning for a perfect book launch. She is an amazing resource for self-published authors. I have been following and reaching out to Lori for mentoring and especially marketing and so many things that she serves the author community with. And she is just such a kindred spirit for me. She's a, a frequent visitor to our author work group. So thank you so much, Lori, for once again, taking time out of your busy day and joining us here. Thank you. I taught kindergarten for 10 years and was inspired to write my first book then. And I wrote it close to 15 years ago, and I had no idea what to do with it at all. Self-publishing on Amazon was still very new, wasn't a lot of information, was still very niche, I would say. So I kind of shelved the book idea and went on with my life, got married, had three kids. Fast forward 10 years, and I was bored and antsy, and I'm creative, and I needed an outlet. And I joined a group kind of like this and set the goal to publish my book. And from when I set that goal to when it was done, it was about six months. And it was a bit of a letdown. I mean, I had the 48 hour period of euphoria, where it's fantastic. And I was like, oh, I guess that's all it is. <laughs> because it didn't sell, you know, except to my mom and my sister and my bestie. So I kind of moved on and I uh, created resources for teachers because I was a teacher and spoke at many teachers conventions and things like that. And then because I have a slightly obsessive personality, let's say, I've talked to so many other authors and I feel like the thing that sets us apart when we're successful is we're just a little bit obsessed. Anyhow, so I learned from who was putting info out there at the time, which was largely novelists. And they were all talking about Amazon ads. That was the catalyst for me doing an ebook. I got my ebook out, started running ads, and that was the magic sauce at the time. So I went from five books a day to 10 books a day to 50 books a day, thinking it was a dream. And it was largely because of ads. And then I slowly started learning some other stuff. And then to be honest, when the pandemic hit, my sales really tanked and everything seemed so unreliable with Amazon and all of that. And so I laid on the couch for a few months wallowing in self-pity and, you know, all the feels with the pandemic. And then I, I had this epiphany one day, like, what if they lift the lockdown and I haven't even cleaned one closet? And I haven't even done this and I haven't done that. And so that was all I needed for whatever reason to get up and get back on the saddle. And I took some courses and really learned the final piece of the marketing puzzle that I didn't know before. And so now I sort of my passion lies really is in marketing. And so April's passion is publishing and she's so, so good at it. So I refer everybody to her, but the marketing is what just lights me up and that's what I obsess over. So what I have today for you is a launch plan. And actually, I don't think that I would call it perfect, April, because I don't think there's ever any perfect plan. There's no perfect marketing plan. There's no perfect anything. There's so many different ways you can do things. And it's more like perfect for you, perfect for your lifestyle, your situation, your personality. There's a million different paths you can take that will lead you to success. But if you try to do all of them, then you'll end up on the couch for three months, right? So what I have today is a launch plan on Trello. I'm going to show you how to use it. This is a beautiful platform that's free. So I love it. And you can move things around. And you could move all sorts of things around. I probably shouldn't move too much around. So what I'm going to do is take you through the idea of this, maybe all at once. And then I'd like to come back to the beginning and maybe dive a little bit deeper. So the objectives, what are the objectives of even organizing any kind of a launch? So the way I see it, it's to grow your fan base. And I'm really a grassroots, one at a time, connecting with people on Facebook and the DMs, that's sort of my strategy, like one fan at a time. If anybody knows Pat Flynn and super fan or just that concept of a thousand true fans and you'll, you know, that'll make your business. That's what I love, that kind of stuff. So grow your fan base. A lot of people think that launch is strictly to generate reviews. And I disagree with that thought from my own books. I see between 10 and 20 reviews is where I, I get a bit of a boost, like some review juice from Amazon. And then beyond that, 
There's no discernible difference. So other people might have other experiences. I do understand that it's important and it's definitely factored in here, but to me, that's only part of your, you know, your objectives. So you really want to grow your fan base, generate reviews, and steadily grow that activity on your Amazon book page. But also to me is growing your email list. So remember I talked about the magical puzzle piece. I took a very expensive training in the fall and it was on email marketing because I was going to be a strictly email marketer. <laughs> and that didn't happen, but I fell in love with email marketing because I finally understood it. I finally saw the potential. I finally just really got it and everything clicked into place. So if you go to your Hotmail inbox or your junk mail right now, everything in there almost is junk. Like it actually is junk. There's usually one or two people that their name stands out and you go, oh yeah, I like to read that. I'm going to move that to my inbox or I'm going to star that or I'm not going to delete it. Like April wrote to me this week and she said, Lori, I, I look forward to your emails and I always make sure to read them because they're interesting. And so that's like the first key is to be interesting, of course, and not salesy. But the point of growing your email list is so that when you get around to publishing your second book, you have people you can tell, right? There's about a 40% open rate on email, well, depending on how you do it, of course, but compared to about a 9% on social media. So 9% of your followers, so 9 out of 100 people will see your social media post, but 40 out of 100 will read your email. So it's really worth it. And it's also that direct line. So people look at the email, and yes, they might delete you or do whatever, but they're looking at it, they see it, it's there, it's in their inbox. Social media, you just don't have that kind of control or guarantee. So that to me should be your four objectives. And I would say that the email list is actually the most important. And that's where whenever I talk to anybody, they go like, because oh. <laughs> everybody hates the idea of it. But trust me when I say that it's worth it. Okay, so before you get started with your launch, I hope that you are really honed in on your target audience. So we can come back and go to this later, but is it a teacher? Is it a parent? Is it a counselor? And then you can drill down even farther, right? So is it a kindergarten teacher, high school teacher, special needs sort of classroom, whatever you call them in whatever you know section you're in, that kind of teacher. Is it a mom? Is it a dad? Is it both? Is it a special needs mom? Is it a special needs dad? Both. Is it a counselor, a therapist, a grandparent? So if you know your target audience, you can speak directly to your target audience with your words. So, you know, like if you're speaking to a teacher, you know, in your classroom, when all the kids are sitting on the carpet in their sit spots, because that's what we call, that's what we call them now. And they all look to you and yada, yada, yada. So those words will appeal to your target audience when you're using them. Okay, so I'm hoping we can come back to that and help everybody drill down, but let's keep going for now, just to make sure that I don't talk too long. So now we start with the timeline. So we start two to three months. So not everybody starts three months out. If you start three months out, you're just going to have a nice amount of time to organize your thoughts and not have to cram a whole weekend of doing stuff. You can do a little bit each day and not feel like you're dying under the weight of the pressure. So we have two to three months out, depending. One month out, the week before your launch day, day after launch, three days later, and then forever and ever ongoing. And I try to give these the labels. So on your Trello board, you can change these if you want, but I wanted people to have an idea of what would involve tech because they might need to plan longer for that. What would cost money? Because they might have to do some research on that. Where does the social media stuff come into play? And I think those were all the labels. So two to three months out, you need to get your author platform in order. So that is your website. And it doesn't have to be fancy and it doesn't have to be expensive. It can be a one pager, it can be a three pager. You don't have to have an e-com plugin or setup. It helps down the line, but you don't have to when you're starting. Website, at least one primary social media channel and an email list. <laughs> We should like play a drinking game. How many times I say email list? It will be hot chocolate, of course. Okay, sign up for an email service provider. So that's the platform or service that sends your email for you. So I've just found out actually that Squarespace will do it for you. Like in the back end of Squarespace, you can set it up and you can pay monthly. So if you have that kind of website, I was just talking to a website designer because she's going to do some work for me for a client. And so she was showing me the back end of it and it was really nice and easy 
and fairly inexpensive. So that is an option. Otherwise, there's the green, like for money and free, because for example, with MailerLite, you can have up to a thousand email addresses for free. But when you get beyond that, you have to pay money. I think it's $10 a month for a thousand to whatever that next level would be, 2,500. So there's all kinds of these, all kinds of these services. I recommend MailerLite for a reason, which has to do with deliverability. But if you already have one, so a lot of people already are signed up with MailChimp, you already have it and it's set up, just leave it with them. If you're new, MailerLite is a good choice. Okay, so this is a techie thing. So coming back to email being your primary sales channel, you need to grow it somehow. And so you're growing that by asking for people for your launch team. You can also offer something for free. And so you've probably heard this strategy a lot, offer a freebie or do an opt-in. There's a few different ways sort of you can talk about it, but you want something, you know, that people will really want. So would you want one coloring sheet? Maybe if your kid was in love with it, like it was a Paw Patrol one and they really loved it, maybe you would. But you have to think a little bit bigger than that in my experience to really drive the signups. So that's just like this, the world is your oyster. So everybody's kind of stuck on coloring pages and activity sheets, but the audio book, the video book, recorded author visit, recorded question and answer, song, all, yeah, lots of kinds of stuff. So you can create maybe four freebies, let's say, if you have that capacity, test them. So test them on different days, test them at different times, test them on different months, see what people really want. And then you can keep that one and then you can offer the other ones later in your emails or you can sell them for 99 cents or $1.99 or something like that. But you don't have to get into that habit of giving for free every month or every week because that's what people will expect. Okay. So this is just kind of the steps for, you know, like you create the freebie and then you have to link up your tech to offer the freebie. Build your author website or have it made. It's always gonna be at least some money, even if you're only buying the domain and the hosting, and that's a techie thing. I do have somebody, like I said, I was just talking to somebody, so I don't know if anybody, April, I can maybe give you her info, but she's gonna um, make a templated author website for me on Squarespace, and then she will sort of customize it for whoever wants, if that makes sense, and she's great. Okay, so the dedicated book page on your website. If you're not at the stage where you have a website or you can't do that, the email service providers often will allow you to make a landing page. So that is so that you can, when you're sharing about your book, hey, here's my awesome new book. You can sign up for my launch team here. You can get the freebie here or whatever you're telling them, but it's really nice to have a dedicated landing page just for your book. Okay, so the reader group. I'm guessing April has talked about reader group a lot, probably launch group, that kind of stuff. Yeah, we've been starting to talk about launch teams and I did share Vicki Weber's video and recommendations of you know the process that she used and she did speak to the author group. So I think... You know, it's amazing to see the type of momentum you can build by having that launch team. Awesome. Okay, so I won't go into it too much if there's a recording of Vicky because she's really the superstar in this area. I don't know exactly what she says, but my advice is don't, like, let's say you collect the 150 people, let's say, or however many it is, doesn't matter if it's 20 or 100 or 1,000. You collect those people, you need to stay in touch with them. Like if you just say, thank you so much, I really appreciate it. And then the communication goes, it's gonna be that much harder for your next book to you know, motivate them, activate them again. So if you create even just an email list that's special to them, again, it comes back to that super fan idea. You want to engage with them, connect with them, build a relationship so that there are going to be your thousand loyal, screaming, raving fans, and they're going to spread the word for you as time goes on. Your next book comes out and there they are for you again. So don't think of them as a launch team and that's it. Think of them as, yes, the launch team, but also a reader team or a reader group or your super fans, whatever word you want to use that works for you. But uh, just keep them connected to you would be my advice. Having a reader team or a launch team or raving fans, whatever you call them, if you have that and you have the capacity to develop a relationship with them, I'm not saying one-on-one, -on -one. you don't have to talk to them on the floor or do whatever. 
they can be on an email list and you email them once a week just to update them and say thank you. And here's a YouTube video that I saw and it really touched me this week. And so I just thought I would share the link. Here you go, everybody. I hope you're having a great week. Here's the link about the cat and the lawyer and the whatever. And I laughed so hard. I peed my pants and y'all have to see this. And this is what I'm sharing this week. And it's that connection. And so that's for me, that's what makes all the difference. If you're going to do it, I would say do it well. <laughs> yeah. And some people also use Facebook groups with their launch team too. I'm not sure how you feel about that, Lori, but I've seen some people do a really good job with Facebook groups and get a lot of engagement. And it was Mm -hmm. just a lot of fun. I mean, they can make it very much a lot of fun doing that as well. Yeah, And that's a great way to really make those people fall in love with you. My concern with a Facebook group is only that there are a lot of work. So if you can make the commitment to show up at least once a week to your group after your launch, to still engage with them and be connected, then go for it. If you don't feel like you have that capacity or like you're going to want to in six months, I would stick to the email list because it's so much easier, but that's an individual thing for everybody. But that is a great way to make connections because you can go live and have these face-to-faces and put on your party hat and show your book and really share that, you know, in-person but virtual excitement. And that goes a long way to developing those relationships. Okay, so we are here. We're here. All these things can be small steps. Some of them like building the website are bigger, but this one is just add that opt-in form that you created to your website and share about it on social media. So maybe it goes in your bio or something like that, but make sure that you remember to hook it up, that it all works and that you share it. Don't just, yay, I did it. And then it goes, it gets checked off and you never share it. That's the point is to share it. So start sending emails to the people who sign up for your list. Twice a month is good. A lot of people say, and this is in the opt-in box, don't worry, I'm only going to email you once a month. Don't worry, I'm only going to email you when I have a new book or something like that. So it's like the opposite of what you want to do. You want to stay top of mind. So if you only email once a month, even if they are kick-ass emails, if 30 days have gone by, people are going to be like, who is this again? And like once a month, they have to get to know you again. It's like 50 first dates. Right. Once a month, they're like, am I going to fall in love with you or am I not? And will they or won't they? So at least I would say do twice monthly, but weekly is even better. And so I actually I created a product because there's so much resistance to emailing. So for very low cost, ten dollars a month, I do like an email template. So there are four emails. They're not sequential or anything and you customize them. And so to me, that's super cheap and it's enough to get you going because often just staring at a blank doc is really overwhelming. What do I say? How do I say it? All that kind of stuff. So so anyway, I just thought I would mention that. Okay, so. At this point, you can start revealing your cover design. This might be a first draft. It might have no color. You're doing it to generate interest. Keep in mind, not really to get approval, if that makes sense. You're not really polling everybody because you don't know. You might poll everybody just to get engagement. Name this character. What color should the hat be? What color should the shirt be? Something like that. But you're not really putting it out to your fans and your audience for them to shape the book. Because if you start listening to 50 different opinions, you're not gonna be able to think straight. There's special groups and special people who critique and fix up covers. But at this point, it does do a lot to generate some interest and engagement if you do start sharing some pictures. Okay, so start promoting your book and your journey on social media. This also can be really like a hurdle for a lot of people. What do I say? I have nothing to say. Nobody's going to want to talk about it. Think of it as just practice. Think of the next month as practice, daily talking about it. I've heard it described as documenting your day. Today, I had to approve something from the illustrator. Today, I had to sign my contract and it was a big deal. And now I'm having a cookie, all that kind of stuff. So just think of the next month or like three months out from your launch as practice and getting in the habit. Because a lot of people, it's just that hurdle of just doing it. At this point, you can try to identify similar authors. So there's a lot of us out there. If you can identify some similar topic type authors 
and connect with them, you can really get together. You've probably seen some giveaways and things with Valentine's books, right? Or back to school books or Christmas books, all that kind of stuff. If you can make a nice, strong network with other authors, you know, for one thing, it's shoulders to lean on and people to connect with and talk to. But it also can really benefit both parties or all the parties from time to time, you know, moving forward. So, hey, my book's launching next week. Will you share about it? I'm happy to share about yours when yours launches next month, that kind of stuff, right? Probably everybody in your group kind of does it for each other. So I would say two to three months out, if if you don't already have a network like that, start looking. Two to three months out, you can start looking into influencers and bloggers because they can't share about your book at a moment's notice. They need a few months and sometimes they need longer. But what I found with authors is usually you're not really thinking about your launch anytime before three months, just the odd author is. So that was all the two to three months out. So you can see how, you know, depending that can take up a lot of time or a small amount of time, depending on what you have done already. One month out. So your book is launching in four weeks. You need to be consistent on social media. It's better to post three times a week than to post three days in a row and then fall asleep for the rest of the week. So it's just stay consistent. And that's what I found is like a huge Achilles heel for so many authors is just being consistent. And I think it comes down to strategy. If you don't have a strategy and if you don't have an objective and a goal, so you don't really know why you're posting, so you don't really know what you should be posting, you end up just spaghetti on the wall type stuff. And when it doesn't work, you end up feeling down about it. And then you stop for a while. And then something happens and it reinvigorates you and you start again. But again, you don't really see any benefits from it because you still don't have a plan and it's a vicious circle. So we're not really going into social media strategy tonight. I'm just at this point saying, try to be consistent at least with what you're doing. Okay, so emails now. So one month out, you need to have your emails sorted. And as much as possible, if you have them pre-written and scheduled to go weekly, that's going to make your life so much easier. Same with the social media. If you have that pre-planned and if you schedule, you can just use Facebook's Creative Studio, Creator Studio, and it's free and you can schedule like a lot at a time. If you can just do that, that's going to save you so much headaches in the future. So all these kind of go together. One month out, if you can arrange the swap. So that doesn't mean swap now. That just means arrange it. Hey, Bob, um, my book's coming out May 1st. Can you share it with your audience on May 2nd? Awesome. I'm happy to return the favor whenever. I've been working with a few others and I like try to find people to share emails with and nobody really has an email list. They're hard to find. They're unicorns. So you would just swap about social media. So I would share your new book on my Facebook page with like my personal people. And probably my business page too, but what you personal gets better reach. So you would try to arrange swaps with other authors on social media. If you can do it for email lists, absolutely ask that first. I think if you're going to schedule an ebook promo, there's BookBub you can try and Fussy Librarian. I think maybe April, your finger on the pulse of this more, but Fussy Librarian has always done the best for me. But you might actually even need to set this up more than a month in advance because they're really popular now. They are. And yeah, some of them are, you have to book way ahead, but you can't book them until your ebook is published. So you actually have to have that published before you can actually book the particular promo. And I took Dave Chesson's list of promo sites and went through it and gathered all the ones that have for children's book authors that do accept children's book authors. And we, and uh, Mira, my assistant did a great job of adding contact information. I think we have a list of like 50 or more of promo sites. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. So that is a resource that is available also to to our authors. And have you heard from people who have done it with all of those ones that they saw a benefit to it? I think that the, the resource is so new. I don't think that anyone has actually, you know, gone through that yet. I do plan to incorporate that a lot with this particular work group to see if we can't do some testing and see which ones work. And the ones that just aren't doing well or don't really provide much benefit will remove and start to really just refine that list. I think that's a great idea. Okay, so I added that here. 
Fussy Librarian is the one that I hear consistently people say they got the most downloads from. So that's why I mention it. In your author network, so this one is slightly different. It's not asking them to share your stuff. It's you taking the initiative and sharing their stuff. Seeing them post about their free ebook day, seeing them post a spread or a cover or anything like that, share the post, pay it forward. And there's psychological principles at play there. Reciprocity, people are going to feel like they need to return the favor and you're not asking them to do it and they will just do it. So at this point, this whole month beforehand, see what you can share, comment on other people's posts, share other people's posts. If you have your email list up and running, you can offer, Hey, who needs me to share to my email list about it. It doesn't matter if your email list is 20 people, it might be more than what they have, right? So at this point, as long as you have the time and you're able to, I would really try to pay it forward as much as you can because the next month when you launch, it's going to come back to you. And April, I think this was yours. Was this one yours? The art copies to the reader's favorite? Not specifically, but I think it is good to reach out to those reviewers that get some reviewers and be able to start working on that award. You know, if you can get a five star from Reader's Favorite, or you can do something with Midwest and get something moving, it's just more that you can use as you're launching your book. And also getting people to provide testimonials, you know, that would be really helpful. And, you know, if you've got a book about mindfulness or about mental health, then, you know, get somebody who is an expert in that area to provide you a testimonial because wouldn't that be great to be able to have that on the back cover or on your Amazon listing page. If you were to cram all this into the week before, you'd be really stressed out. Okay, so a week before, publish the ebook. Send your early advanced reader copies to your team or to Midwest and Reader's Favorite if you're doing it. Whoever has said that they would like an early copy, And that's the e-copy. So on social media, you can reveal the final cover. You can make a big deal about it, or you can just do a picture in front of your face with your your eyes excited. Countdown graphic. So there's some, a little bit more detailed in some of these when they have lines. So Jana Broker did some amazing graphics and it was just like five days to go, four days to go, three days to go. So look up her business page and look up the pilot rate graphics. And it's just a fun way to count it down if you are able to make those. So post those countdown graphics if you've made them. Your own author network now, ask them for a share. So this is the week before. So you're going to say, hey, Sally, my book is published you know, I'm publishing it on Monday. Can you share it with your audience? And then the T there is going to be following up saying, did you do it? Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Can you tag me so I can share the love, you know, that kind of stuff. And it just get, puts the onus a little bit more on those people to, you know, stay accountable if they said they were going to do it. Publish your paperback, your hardcover, whatever you're doing, at least a few days before your launch date, especially since the pandemic. It used to be published within 24 hours. And now sometimes I see people people four or five days later that's not the norm and usually they're the problem with it um so i'm not sure if that is the same as what april would advise or even longer yeah and i've been recommending that people do set their book up for pre-order and so it's a slightly i mean by then the book is already out there so that when everything is ready to launch it goes pretty smoothly But if you're not doing pre-orders, then you definitely want to give yourself a couple of days prior. So as much as you can, if you can schedule and create your posts, your emails, everything, have it all up and planned and scheduled, it'll leave you that, you know, breathing space as you tell people it's live. So launch day, post on social and plan to post a couple of times like morning lunch and dinner and maybe even as you're going to bed maybe it's a selfie of you in your bed like whoop that was a day right and if you happen to get a tag like a bestseller tag make sure you take a screenshot because it might be hot in the morning and share that as well again ask your author network so you can spread out the request for the whole week so for example i have five authors who have said absolutely i'm going to share So then it makes sense for you to say, can you share on Monday, you share on Tuesday, you share on Wednesday, because you want on your book page on Amazon, you want a slow build of interest. You don't want to spike on day one and then not like for it to go downhill. Mm -hmm. So it's better to start slowly. So if you have that confirmation of people that will share and you really feel confident that they will, then try to be specific with them. Don't leave it up to them. 
If you say, can you share on Monday at nine o'clock? They're much more likely to do it than, hey, will you just share it sometime next week for me? Right? And I think y'all kind of know that even from your own behavior. Yeah, yeah, I'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, I'll review your book. Sure, no problem. But if somebody says, can you review it like tomorrow at nine o'clock? <laughs> that would be weird for a review, but you're just more likely to have people actually do it. You can have this pre-written to your email list, but today is the day, the book has launched, I'm so excited, yay, yay, yay. And so that's launch day. The day after launch, well, if your ebook is published over here, you can technically start the Amazon ad already. So whenever it's published, you can start the ads. Whenever your pre-order is up, you can start the ad. Start them like really low. Start them a manual keyword ad targeting your metadata keywords and your author name and your book title. So just start a manual keyword ad with maybe 10 phrases or words. Do it as a phrase match. So not exact, not broad phrase. And don't spend a lot of money, like bid 31 cents. Just start like that because again, you want a slow build. So you want to really hook your book up with your metadata. Assuming you've done your research, you've picked some good words and nobody's using kids books. So you really want to hook, you want to connect your book with your metadata and your title and your author name really strong. And so especially if it's not really published yet, the paperback, the hardcover, and you're advertising the ebook, you really don't want to spend more than a dollar a day. You just want to sort of get those that relevancy built. And then you can slowly start to increase your ads if they're working for you. Amazon ads are no longer the core of my strategy whatsoever. And I find them really, really unreliable, but they are worth running still. And they are worth running during a launch like this. And so then the next day, and you're going to continue being consistent on social media. You can grab, like if people write to you, hey, I saw your book, it was so, so great, or congrats to you or whatever. You can take screenshots and just, you know, like uh, buzz out people's names and stuff like that. But keep that as some social proof. Keep it in like a love folder on your desktop and then pull it out when you need it. About three days later, it doesn't have to be exact, but this is when you send your email list, most of them won't open, like 60% won't open that book launch email. So just resend it. Not to everybody, but to the people who didn't open it, just resend it. Hey, this happened this week. I'm so excited. Here it is. If you want the chance to buy it, review it, do whatever you're asking them to do, here's a link. Make it easy for them. Often the reader team, like our very carefully selected, fantastic friends and family and audience, about 10% of them will actually leave the review or do what you ask them to do. So if you have access to them, follow up. Hey, the book launched this week. It was such a great experience. Were you able to review it? I'd love to see what you thought. Or if they're sharing with their audience, tag me in the post. I'd love to spread the love, that kind of stuff. And the fortune really is in the follow-up. Not that you'll make a fortune from it, but as soon as you email twice or message somebody twice, as annoying as you feel, it's that second time that makes somebody go, oh yeah, I meant to do that. I'm going to do it right now so I don't forget again. So you almost have to do the first ask in order to be able to ask the second time. <laughs> and so I know a lot of us feel like, oh no, the person on the other end doesn't feel that way. And the only way you're really going to learn that is by doing it. I know that me saying it and April going, yes, yeah, she's right. You know, that doesn't reassure you. So you really just have to put yourself out there and do it. And then you'll learn. So then ongoing forever and ever and ever and ever ads, if you want, if they're working for you, if you're continuously losing money, don't keep them going forever. Promos, if there's group giveaways you can do or run a contest for Valentine's Day or there's tons of different things that you can tie your promos into. Marketing. So the link here is to a podcast series I did if you're interested. It was 12 days of marketing. I did it Christmas time. So 12 things to put on your radar for marketing. So then I have your reader group here. So I was talking about this before. Plan to post in the group at least once a week. Not all about your book. Not all me, 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 me. But articles, recipes, you know, going back to your target audience and the people in the group. What do they like? What will they be interested in? Even just some engagement posts. Like if any of you are friends with me on my personal profile, the other day I posted, you know, be honest, how many tabs do you have open on your computer? And that kind of engagement post has nothing to do with books, nothing to do with me selling, but people engage with it, right? And so that kind of stuff you can put in your reader group, just connect with them. So don't 
stop sharing about your freebie because the launch is over. Mm -hmm. So I would say until you really feel like everybody that I know has got it, post about it two or three times a week, post different graphics with it, post different captions, share it in your email list. Now they might be on your email list because they got it, but did they use it? Maybe they need a reminder. We all download how many things a day. Sometimes we need a reminder to open it up and use it, or maybe we opened it up and looked at it once, but we didn't use it. So there's nothing wrong with reminding people about that. Okay, so whenever you come through on your copy of this and you see these lines, there's going to be a little bit of stuff on here that I pretty much went over everything. I wanted to show you as well, if you want to keep everything on this one board, you can even like write your emails here, which is cool. So then you can go and grab it from here. So, you know, whatever you want to say, you can put the whole email in here with a topic or something, you know, and this is the freebie received, something like that. And so it can really be really cool. I like that. Yeah, I like this too. And I do it with social posts as well. So I would do something like, and they get very big when I do them, but like, this is my Monday. And my Tuesday, and then you can just go boom, 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 boom. So then I plan my posts for the week. There's, I didn't do that right. This is supposed to be like week one, which isn't as handy, I think. And it's just so fantastic that it's a free resource. And then you can do that. You can put, you know, what are the holidays in February, the holidays in March, the holidays in April, so that you know what you need to create some content around if that you know, is relevant. You can create your own checklist. So if you had a launch list on each day or something like that, and then you can feel good about checking off your list. It's a lot of things that you can do in Trello. And then it tells you, yeah, you did it. It's kind of fun. It can be a lot to set up in the beginning if you're starting from scratch, but worth it, I think, to organize yourself. This is really, really helpful. And I think so many people feel like inundated with all these thoughts and all these these are things I should do. And what do I do first? And I love that you organized it in this way. And you're allowing people to go in and copy the board. I think that's one of the things about you, Lori, that I love so much is that you share freely with knowledge and information for the author community. And I highly recommend visiting Lori's site and the resources and marketing courses and things that she does because she is just an amazing resource. Thank you, everybody. You should all friend me on Facebook so we can keep in touch and so that when your books come out, I can celebrate with you. And I would highly recommend joining Lori's email list. And I did reach out to her just yesterday to tell her, Lori, I just love what you're doing with your emails. And I'm learning from by following her and how she communicates with her list. I'm learning things. She is really a master when it comes to email copy. And I'm sure that came with a lot of investment in courses and things like that. But she also has great tools and tips and content and it's teaching me a lot of how I want to communicate with my readers as well and self-published authors. Thank you so much, Lori. As always, it's a, always a pleasure to have you here. You're so welcome. It was nice to see everybody. Good luck Thank with your you. Bye Thank bye. you, Lori. You're welcome. Bye, everybody.